So I have here um, an adapted switch, um, something that is connected to a quarter inch uh, mini plug here. Um, and it's been adapted out of something called a Cover 30S voice recording switch. Uh, it's something that I bought on Amazon. I think it was about $15 for uh, two of them. Uh, and I'm pretty sure you could pay, I don't know what it was, uh, th this is Canadian dollars also, like about $9 Canadian. So uh, it would be uh, less than that in American dollars as well. And so um, they're pretty inexpensive for what they are, and uh, they're actually meant to do voice recording for kids' games and things like that. You, know, you can record something and play it back. Um, they're pretty low quality for that, to be honest. I wouldn't probably recommend them for the voice, um, just because it is hard to actually hear what they say. But they're actually really nice switches in terms of the tactile feel of them. So you can see I just activated the toy there. And I'm going to demonstrate that one more time, just so you can kind of get a feel. So, it starts automatically. Just so you can get a feel for how much pressure, that kind of thing. If I just lay my hand on, I'll give a little push. It really takes very little to actually get it to run. So, it's a pretty light touch switch. It's maybe not quite as much as a Big Mac or something like that, that you can kind of rest your hand on the side, and the weight of your hand can really contribute a little bit more. This one you may have to be just a little bit more central, but all things considered that's a pretty light touch switch and it does pop up very easily. It it's really encourages um, the upward movement after the press and putting the hand back into a resting position. So to me this is a pretty pretty good switch for the cost of it um, and probably effective for I would think a lot of a lot of users. And so I certainly like how it feels uh, in the hand. So uh, in order to adapt this, I've gone through basically, and um, I can show you inside here. And I'm going to just pull out the plug as well so I can show that as well. So I've put on a quarter inch uh, mini plug like this, and basically um, uh, inside here, if I just unscrew the um, housing on it, you can see that. If I unscrew the housing, I get this. Let's focus in. This little uh, plug like that, and so this is um, the same thing as like a headphone jack, that kind of thing. There's two uh, places that you have to connect. One is sort of a, a little port at the bottom here, so you can actually kind of um, splice your wire, take the sheath off the end of it, twirl it in your fingers so it's nice and tidy. Um, and then you can even put it right through these holes here. There's a little hole there and a little hole in the back. And then just put a little dab of solder um, on them to hold them. I, I do recommend soldering these just because with a lot of movement, um, they can unfurl. And so uh, th those two wires are just sort of uh, coming right around to the inside of the switch here. Where I have this all adapted so you can kind of see what I, I've done. But originally there were... Um, little pads on the bottom here that you can put back on when you're finished adapting it. And again, this is a concept. Not not every switch will be like this inside, but um, it might help to kind of, you know, if you're going through a switch and you're trying to figure out how you might be able to adapt it, this is one possible way if it meets these requirements. So um, I pulled off those little stickers on the bottom and then I took out the four screws on the perimeter. Uh, that allowed me to get inside and you can see it's made up of a switch plate on the top, a assembly in the middle, and what this assembly does is when it's put on just right uh, and you push down, it's actually going to push down on a little tack switch underneath. And so this has some finicky little things, so it's a little hard for me to show it right now, but you have to line these up to make sure that it goes in the little receivers here. A lot of these pieces are kind of specific as to the orientation, um, but they're pretty easy to figure out just by playing around with them. So all the switch plate is doing is it's pushing down on that little assembly, and then this piece here is pushing down on this tack switch right in the center. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've sniffed out everything in here. Um, I've taken out as much as possible. I've taken out a microphone. I've taken out little pieces of junk. All this stuff came out of here. There's microphone, there's all this kind of stuff that, you know, was in the battery compartment. I wanted to just get rid of as much as possible. So there's nothing in here that could kind of short out or 
um, that someone could get into. Um, I'd probably glue this panel shut at the bottom for the battery as well, that kind of thing. It's obviously a switch that still has to be supervised because of the, um, you know, the small parts like this, even when it's closed up, but, um, you know, just to make it as safe as possible. Um, so in here, I'm trying to reduce anything that could short. And a short is not really dangerous with this, especially since there's no batteries in it. What it might do though, is it would mean that the toy would just continuously run because it would be as though the switch is closed. What we're doing is we're kind of shorting um, the port here. Like I've actually soldered to the two sides of the switch that run this button and then sent it out the back of the machine through the switch port to here. And all it's doing now is it's connecting right into this switch. So I took out all, you can see where I snipped out all the extra stuff that we don't need. The one thing in this switch in particular, like I said, this is more of a concept. You may not find it's exactly the same in every switch, but this particular switch, I found I had to put back in this microphone. I pulled it out. I, you know, disconnected the wires and everything. Um, but it was actually kind of weight bearing because the assembly here uh, sits down on top of it. And if it wasn't there, it kind of collapses to the side instead of pressing down on the switch nice and flush. Uh, so you can see what I've done with the switch essentially here is, uh, I should say with the cord, is I've screwed a hole in it that's very tight. It holds the wire in perfectly. And then I also put it through a couple of um, catch points here because we want to make it sure that um, if there's any sort of pressure, if it's uh, the uh, wire gets pulled on, that it's going to stay in there. So not only is it a very small hole to make sure that it really doesn't have much play at all, it kind of wraps around a couple of little pegs and things in there, and there's pinch points that make it so that it's very, very sturdy. There's no way you could yank on that and pull it out. Um, even with my full strength, I wouldn't be able to, but if you have a switch where you don't have that in it, you could also maybe do things like twist it around something and hot glue it really well. So if there's a stable peg like that, maybe do like three turns and then put hot glue all around it, it's going to be pretty hard for someone to pull that out without, you'd probably break the whole, you know, uh, body before you actually manage to pull the uh, the cord out. So, um, and then what we're going to do, so I brought it all the way around. I have my two wires here. You really just, like I said, you splice those. You, you know, you curl them up in your, um, swirl them around in your finger until they're nice and tidy. Uh, so all the strands are kind of stuck together. And then I just put a little solder bead here and a little solder bead there. Try not to connect it to anything else because you just want a nice clean uh, connection. You don't want, you know, electricity coming off into other things because you wouldn't want anything that could maybe close the circuit. So at one point I actually accidentally touched some of these pieces, um, these little connectors over here, and maybe even over here, I'm not sure. Um, and something was connecting all the way around. So it was like the switch was just continuously running. The toy was just trying to run all the time. So I had to redo my solder points. Um, something that can be really handy is a solder sucker. Um, you know, to put it in there, you heat up the solder, uh, you push this down. Once the solder's uh, heated up, you click it and it sucks the solder back up and it really leaves a nice clean point again that you can, um, that you can redo. Uh, so if you short circuited anything, that can definitely be a good tool. Um, basically, really that's all there is to it. I can show you, this is um, a tack switch, just like the, the switch here. This is a picture that I made of it here, just so that you can kind of see where I've connected it. You connect um, the activation sort of state for this switch when it's pushed down is to connect to outside terminals. So you uh, kind of go like kitty corner like this on one side and the other. So that would be red wire or black wire um, or vice versa. It doesn't matter whether it's red or white. It's just that one switch goes to this side one switch goes to that side. Um, and really that's all there is to it. Um, once you've got it together, you can basically put your switch assembly back. With this particular switch, you kind of have to get it uh, just right. I did sort of splay these wires out. You can see they're sort of running along paths. You notice how that one's kind of going around the outside of that little chip. And this one's kind of in a blank area over here. I did that on purpose because when um, you try to put this assembly back in. It's going to be hard for me to demonstrate this because 
it takes a little while to get it just back in the right spot, but let's just pretend that's back in those little receiving pegs properly, which actually I think I may have got it. Um, you can see how that goes to the side. It doesn't interfere with the assembly, and it still pushes down easily, so there's no more difficulty pushing it than there would be. My concern would be that if those wires touched um, this part of the assembly here, that it might actually sort of impede it from uh, working. And so after that, you basically just slide this back in underneath, um, and that's really it. Um, as I say, I'd probably glue the bottom shot and that kind of thing. You put these little uh, feet back on uh, after you put the screws in, and you should end up with a you know a closed assembly again like this. You can see there's what the um, little uh, feet look like when they're closed. Uh, you may have to kind of rotate this around to find the right part on that middle assembly because it does have little bumps here as well. Those have to line up. So, but that's really um, that's really all there is to it. So once you're finished with that, you can plug it in. Um, you can also make this part of it first and then just short the two wires on the far side here before you solder to anything to make sure that it's actually running on the toy properly. Because if you make an error here, you don't want to build the whole thing. It's going to be a lot harder to figure out where your short circuit is if, um, if you don't test it all the way along. So first test the deck, then test your solder points in here. Um, and then work from there and try to figure it out. If it's if the toy is acting strange as though it's being activated all the time, chances are something, either the uh, pieces in here are touching together 